So this talk, I have to say, I'm just afraid that this talk's going to come back to haunt me um, in, in my life, you know, in my blue team life, because I'm going to be talking about something I've realized, which is a pretty major blind spot um, in a lot of Linux, EDR, and XDR products. Um, I, I Just for various professional reasons, I've been um, looking at a lot of different products in this space over the last 12 or 18 months on a bunch of different engagements. And there's, there's one engagement where, you know, we're trying to develop some additional detection logic in one of these products. And I wanted to create the canary that we could, to, we could use to test some of our new detections on. And rather than actively doing something malicious, I figured, oh, I'll just, you know, echo some evil looking commands and then the pattern matching and our detection would match the canary, but, but no harm would be done. And we tried that and we were sort of nonplussed when we didn't get any hits on our detection. And I went back and I looked at the raw data and I didn't even see the echo commands that I had, I had put out. And the, you know, they weren't listed anywhere in the kind of, you know, collection of process information that the EDR product was collecting. And I, and I sat and I thought about that for a minute. And then I realized what's happening. And what's happening is that basically the way all of these products work in the Linux space is that they hook the exec system call in some way. So they know when new processes start, right? Because everything gets exact, you know, at the lowest level in order to begin operating. Mostly. So the problem is that the shells like bash, for example, include a number of built in functions that just execute from within the bash shell thread. They, they're they not exact as separate processes, right? So like if you run the LS program, okay, cool, boom. It, it execs a program called LS from the disk and away you go. And your EDR product is gonna see that. But the echo command to print out information is actually built into the shell. And so when you echo something, the shell doesn't exec a program called echo. It just does the echo functionality within the existing bash shell thread. And the EDR product does not see that because it's not, it, it's hooking exec. It's not hooking read line or something like that in, in the shell. Oh, huh. That's interesting. Actually, the other thing that it doesn't see aside from shell built in commands is output redirection, right? So like if I, cat something into another program, right? It'll see the cat command that you did, and it'll see the command on the other side of the of the shell, maybe like a, a grab or a awk or something like that. But those, as far as the EDR part are concerned, are basically atomic uh, actions. It doesn't understand that there's a inner process communication happening between the standard output of one command and the standard input of the other. Now we can infer that from various other information, but but you as the analyst have to kind of add that connective tissue. Hmm. And then I was thinking about, um, okay, so what are the functionality that we have in the shell that won't necessarily show up when we we do an exec? uh a hook on exec and so you know you've got echo for printing things out you've got read for you know reading lines from a file you can change directories you can you can print the current directory you're in kill is actually built into most modern shells you don't need to run an external kill program <clears throat> to send signals to tasks um you've also got u limit and u mask which are eh, eh, not so useful um at least for purposes of this argument. And so, but also in addition to those commands, there's a whole bunch of other functionality. 
that's built into the shell. So uh, the Bash shell, for example, has regular expression matching built into the the test operator. You know, it also actually has the ability to do substitutions on variables, just like the said program does with full on extended regular expression syntax. You've got file testing operators. You know, is this file readable? Is it a regular file? Is it executable? And so on and so forth. And crazily enough, um, like shells like Bash also have networking capability built into the shell. Um, so you can, for example, um, echo something to dev TCP host name port number, and it will actually make a TCP connection for you to that host and port and send the data. Um, Ed Scotus did a talk about this many years ago. He called it Netcat without Netcat, but it's built into the shell to do sort of low level network communications. Also, as far as gathering information about processes, the way this works in Linux is that all the commands that um, interact with processes like PS, LSOF, netstat, and things like that are all gathering information out of this slash proc virtual file system. And so that effectively means that since we can read data using the built-in read function, we can also you know, get information about processes by interrogating slash proc. And this is all percolating in my brain and I'm, and I'm flashing back to an episode of the command line Kung Fu blog we did many years ago, where we were trying to rewrite basic shell functionality using only shell built-in functions. And it turns out that, you know, with only this much functionality, you can actually get a long way to rewriting a lot of the Unix command line interface. Um, so like start with something simple like cat, right? Cat, you're just reading a file and you're spitting the output to a file. Well, we have read to read from a file. We have echo to print stuff out and we have loops, right? So that we can loop through all the lines of the file. And then from there, you start building out into other, you know, sort of shell functionality. So copying is just catting a file from one place to another and head and tail are cat, which you stop, right? And so on and so forth. Since we have regular expression matching, I can do something like grep. And since I have the ability to do substitutions, I can do something like said, just using shell built-ins. And so I realized that I can actually, if I wanted to sit down and re-implement a large portion of the Linux user space using only shell built-ins. Now, imagine that from a post-exploitation perspective, right? You've got an EDR product that's sitting there hooking exec, waiting for you to run commands like grep and sed and, and things like that. But instead, what you're doing is you're running from a library of functions, shell functions that you've written that implement things like grep and sed, but only using shell built-ins. And it's completely invisible to your EDR or XDR product because you never exec anything. You're just using functionality built into the shell. And so my imagination would be, you know, you, you, you do whatever you need to do to, to get access to the Linux box. And then the next thing you do is you, you know, download this library. Well, how am I going to do that? How? Well, I'm going to download that library by making a connection via output redirection to dev TCP, you know, whatever, right? So I could, you know, basically write a, a simple version of wget that uses that dev TCP hack to download this library of, of shell functions. And once I do that, I can suddenly, you know, slip into cloaking mode and do a lot of stuff that's basically invisible to the uh, XDR process, which is, you know, it's just kind of a fun thing to think about. Um, and, and a lot of these products just aren't prepared to deal with this because they're not looking at the right data. Right? And it's not just, you know, stuff like this. Um, interestingly, a few weeks ago, I saw 
on social media. Somebody had implemented a full base 64 implementation encoding and decoding using only shell built-ins, right? Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of, of fun encodings you can do. Um, you know, I should be able to implement a sorting algorithm to give me something like sort. Unique is just using uh, a, an array to only keep unique values from the input. I think if I, if I sat down and worked hard at it, I could probably create at least a basic command line editor, something similar to ED, right? Um, you know, I already mentioned I can probably do a curl or wget, um, you know, simple kind of curl or wget downloader uh, using that dev TCP hack, right? So there's all kinds of things that you could do if you want to um, be clever about this. And, and, you know, this, what it puts me in mind of is the old days in Windows when basically we weren't doing any sort of auditing of PowerShell, right? And, and so, you know, very naturally what the attackers would do is they, as soon as they got into the box, they jump into PowerShell and everything they did in there wasn't logged and it wasn't tracked. And it was just like, you know, the cloak of invisibility for them. Well, well, this would be the same thing, right? Like as soon as they climb into this library of command line workalikes, everything that they're doing basically stops being tracked by the, the local, you know, endpoint detection tool, whatever, whatever that is. Right. And, and I think that's a fairly major gap um in in the visibility of these tools and it's it's pretty consistently um a problem and and so here's how you test it right so like you, you whatever your linux endpoint solution is do what i did right echo something in the shell right because echo is almost certainly a built-in function with whatever shell you're using and then go look at the data from your edr xdr product does it see the the things that you're echoing right if it doesn't then it's like you know 90 percent of the other edr and xdr products in the world and and it's only hooking exec events and so it doesn't see the stuff that's a shell built in and so it's got this gap in it right um now i haven't sat down and actually written this library like i said I, i've been a little afraid to do this because i'm afraid it's going to come back to haunt me in my in my incident response uh, practice, right? But um, it should be straightforward to do. We actually, like I said, we did a little bit of this already in the command line Kung Fu episode, um, but uh, there, you know, there's, there's more work to do there. Um, you know, and, and setting up the downloader would be fun. And, and, you know, doing some sort of encoding so that it's, you know, and not immediately obvious on the network, what you're what you're doing there, and you know, sucking this information down. Um, now, there's some things that I haven't been able to figure out a way to do um, using shell built-ins. So there are some limits to this. Um, one is that th there's no unlink built into the shell. I, I can't remove files, and I can't like move them. I can copy things, you know, easily enough just by sort of catting them from one place to another, but I have no way to delete the old version of the file once I'm done with it. That's a shame, isn't it? Um, also, uh, links, so hard links and soft links, the, uh, the linking functionality is not built into the shell either. You also don't get to fiddle around with um, permissions, so like Chaon, Chamat, although because um, UMasks, are built into the shell, you do have some control of, over the permissions that new files are created with, but you can't go back and like change the permissions on an existing file, at least not with shell built-in operators. Um, and, and that got me to wondering about some more sort of heavy uh, kinds of things. And, and this, let me just emphasize how theoretical this is in my mind, but you know, if you get into the box and you manage to um, break root on the system, can you then, you know, reflexively inject shared library code to extend the functionality of your shell to bring in some of this functionality um, 
you know, natively into the shell so that you can do things like unlink files without, um, you know, uh, having to exec an outside program. Um, and, and that one's very theoretical to me, but boy, is that an interesting idea um, that's been kind of, you know, going through my brain. But in any event, like even just the simple stuff, I mean, I can get a long way in the Linux shell without any of this functionality that I'm talking about on the slide. Um, and, you know, I can do a lot of damage, right? Um, and uh, like I said, it's going to be mostly invisible uh, from your favorite uh, EDR and XDR product. So if you wanted to look for this, what would you do? So um, what, what we just, I'm on the technical advisory board for a, a, a Linux XDR product. And, and what we decided the best way to, to do this was to actually hook read line. Um, so rather than exec, I mean, which we also hook exec, but by hooking read line, we see everything that the user is, is basically typing into their shell. So whether, um, you know, it, it, it ends up calling the exec or not, we have basically a command history of everything that they've done, uh, at the command line in their shell. Um, it, it won't, um, track like if they run a, a script. Um, but, but if they run a script, they're going to exec something. And so we'll see, we'll see that happening by trapping exec. So, I, so, so read line, I think is the right place to hook to, to see the stuff that you're not seeing by hooking exec. Thanks, Hal. Uh, Hal has a class called Linux command line dojo, and I haven't taken it myself personally, but I'm going to go ahead and guess. And it covers stuff like this and much more. Yeah, I mean, so Linux command line dojo is basically uh, zero to to bash proficiency in sixteen hours. Um, so it's it's focused on um, getting you up to speed on the Linux command line and and teaching you some cool stuff. Um, and it's really targeted. Uh, it's very practically targeted at uh, you know folks who are analysts or operators. Uh, the examples are are all, you know, they're not like these sort of C spot run shell programming examples. I'm actually, you know, like, okay, you have this log file and you need to pull this information out of it, you know, to further your investigation kind of thing. So I've tried to make the examples as practical as possible so that you can, you know, kind of take the knowledge and immediately apply it to your situation, whether that's you're on the SOC or, or you're, you're a red teamer and you're trying to do post exploitation in a Linux environment. You know, I, I wanted to keep the examples uh, practical in that way. All of my classware is available Creative Commons licensed. So you can actually download the command line class slides and exercises. So if you can't take the class for whatever reason, at least you can download it, do it as a self-study. Thanks for watching. Achieve your next level of skills with training courses at antisiphontraining.com.